Hello and welcome to another episode of Field Notes, the weekly podcast from the Hindu business line on all things agribusiness. I am your host, T.R. Vivek. Um, we are now in September. In about 45 days, large swathes of India's northern plains and the national capital region will begin to be covered in a thick blanket of grey smog. The air quality plummets, turning cities into veritable gas chambers. Um, the smoke from the mass burning of paddy stubble from uh, by farmers of Punjab and Haryana is not only a public health risk, especially during the COVID pandemic, but also a global embarrassment for India. Why do farmers burn the stubble and why can't we find a scientific solution for what seems a simple enough problem? Uh, there may be some relief at hand this year. The uh, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, IARI, the country's apex agri-research organization, has come up uh, with a new bioenzyme that can decompose the rice stubble as an alternative to burning of it by farmers. Uh, and it is tied up with uh, a company called Nurture Farm, which is a subsidiary of the large Indian agri-conglomerate called United Phosphorus, to distribute it to farmers uh, pretty much for free. Uh, to talk about the problem of crop burning and its solutions, I am joined by Dr. Ashok Kumar Singh, Hello. the director of IARI, and uh, Dhruv Sani, the CEO of Nurture Farm. Dr. Singh is a renowned genetic scientist who specializes in rice breeding, and uh, Dhruv has nearly two and a half decades of experience running businesses in technology and the food and agri space. Welcome, gentlemen, to Field Notes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Singh, let me uh, begin with you. Uh, for for listeners in the South, people like me, uh, who, who are rice eaters, and these are very large rice growing regions, what is this stubble burning and why haven't we heard of it at all? Why haven't we experienced this? Uh, what, what creates this, what necessitates the need to burn crop stubble? Well, uh, the rice is a staple uh, food for uh, Indians and for two thirds of humanity. In India, rice is grown in 44 million hectare area. And uh, we produce as much as paddy straw per unit area, for example, one hectare, as much we produce paddy grain. So roughly we get about six tons of paddy and uh, equivalent amount of uh, paddy straw is produced. Now, uh, the major cropping system, which is followed in Northwestern plain zone uh, consisting of Punjab, Haryana, Western UP and goes up to, uh, you know, Bihar and West Bengal uh, is uh, rice followed by wheat crop. Now, mm -hmm. generally, uh, when the rice varieties are of long duration, about 160 days, 155 days, then after harvesting rice and sowing of wheat, uh, there is uh, hardly any gap available. And uh, if wheat sowing is delayed, then the wheat yield uh, gets uh, drastically reduced and therefore, Farmers resort to burning paddy straw after harvesting paddy with combine. Uh, they burn it and then uh, immediately after that, they go for wheat sowing. And this happens you know, towards end of October and first week of November when it is at the uh, peak. So, so that's the main but reason. Why do they burn farmers. it? Why, why, why do they, what, what is the reason to burn it? Can't, can't they sort of, you know, uh, to use a layman's term, can't they pluck it out in some manner? You know, why do they resort to it? What, uh, what advantage does burning give them as, as farmers? Well, burning as such does not give uh, advantage of any kind in terms of environment. It causes pollution. In terms of uh, soil health, because when you burn the paddy straw on the soil surface, the soil surface temperature goes up, it kills all the microbes that are present in the soil. So uh, it, it poses health risk to the people who are living in and around and also uh, far distant places because the smog travels to other places also. But the only reason farmers uh, burn is that uh, after harvesting paddy and sowing of wheat, hardly there is one week time available. And so much of paddy extra because most of this harvesting of paddy happens by mechanical means, by combined. After harvesting with combined, grain is separated and paddy extra is left in the field. So there are a number of options that farmers can choose. One is that you have options of uh, baling by which you can make uh, bales using machines, balers, and remove the extra from uh, field. Then field is neat and clean because for taking up wheat sowing, the field has to be, you know, cleaned. Otherwise, wheat sowing operations cannot be facilitated. Number two, 
If uh, uh, it is not removed, then you have to follow the options of in situ management of Pedistra, right in the field, how do you manage Pedistra? So currently what is being done, one option is that you go for a mold board plow. So you plow the Pedistra in the field and then uh, provide irrigation so that it decomposes in the soil. There is option of uh, 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 happy cedar, which is a machine which is well designed to take up uh, sowing of it in the standing paddy uh, extra when the paddy extra is there, it can be machine can take up sowing under that situation. And third option is a machine called super seeder, which is also uh, used, which can be used for facilitating uh, sowing of wheat. Uh, when paddy extra is there in the uh, field. So these are mechanical devices which are being used currently. Uh, but in order to facilitate that, you know, uh, we have come out with this technology, what we call as PUSA decomposer. And Dr. Uh, Singh, before, before, before we come to that, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you a couple of more basic questions about, sure. uh, uh, about the genesis of this problem. Um, one, uh, how, how, how recent is this problem? You know, I have lived in Delhi uh, about 15, 16 years ago. Uh, the problem wasn't as exacerbated as it seems to be today. What has happened uh, in the recent past? Um, and, and why uh, do farmers prefer long duration rice crops, uh, uh, which take 150 days as opposed to shorter duration uh, crops? What is the advantage that they get? So the major advantage of you know having long duration varieties and one of the most uh, commonly grown varieties, Pusa 44, developed by our institute, which takes about 155 days. These varieties are very high yielding. Their yield potential is eight to 10 tons per hectare. As against, if you take a short duration variety, which is 120 days, 125 days, then there is a drastic reduction in yield that comes down to about six tons per hectare. So it are we talking about basmati rice here, sir? Uh, not really. This is, uh, I'm talking of the non basmati rice varieties. Even in non basmati we have varieties of shorter duration of 125 days, 130 days, and PUSA 44, which is a long duration variety. So that has got uh, uh, very high yield. Our, uh, so the difference between the short duration and the long duration variety is about 2 to 2.5 tons per hectare. And uh, since farmer is following uh, only rice wheat cropping system after uh, wheat after rice he has to take wheat so he doesn't mind you know having a long duration variety uh, but if he can get more but then the problem comes that after having long duration variety you don't have time left for wheat uh, sowing and wheat sowing if it is delayed to manage by distra then wheat yield uh, you know it, it uh, reduces drastically so that's that's mm -hmm. the main reason and the problem has been uh, you know there but it has accentuated in last uh, almost a decade it is it is uh, quite serious last 5 6 years it has been really intensified more and more mechanical uh, operations have uh, got into combined harvesting and other things uh, because of that see the problem it is also a problem which has happened because of mechanization when paddy harvesting was mm -hmm. done by manual means so you employ labor you cut it from the ground and remove everything it was taken out but with the mechanization with combined harvesting the paddy extra is left in the field now removing paddy extra uh, mechanically from the field it again uh, it's very labor intensive it cost about uh, uh, two to three thousand rupees per acre so it's additional burden on the farmers and therefore they find it much easier to just uh, use a mat stick uh, and uh, burn it mm -hmm. which, which is no way Focusing, recommended uh, and no not good yeah now, now tell us about uh, this uh, new decomposer that uh, uh, that you have come up with. What does it do, and how does this help uh, to be an alternative for the matchstick? Well, so I must say that this uh, technology, what we call as PUSA decomposer, is a consortia of uh, five, seven fungal species. And these fungal species, uh, most of these uh, fungi, they live in soil. They have been isolated from soil for their ability to decompose paddy extra. So the, after isolating them, purifying them, we have seen their efficacy on decomposing paddy extra. And then uh, based on their efficacy, we have uh, selected the seven fungal species and the consortia is prepared. So when this, these are used uh, in form of a culture and is sprayed on the uh, paddy extra after it is harvested by combined and then uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, subjected to a rotavator uh, mixed with the soil and then water is applied. Then the fungus starts uh, producing certain enzymes. These enzymes are pectinases, 
uh, you know, gluconases. And uh, these are uh, uh, able to decompose by the extra much faster. So it takes about 25 to 30 days after we apply it to decompose the extra completely. I must say here that uh, the decomposer is a, a complementary solution. It, uh, it is not substitute for machines. You see, paddy has to be harvested and for harvesting, we have to use combined, right? So uh, whether we are doing, uh, and after combined harvesting, paddy extra has to be managed, whether we use moldboard plow to put it in the soil, or we go for happy cedar, or we go for super cedar, in all three combinations, decomposer can be applied. And uh, this will help uh, accelerating the process of decomposition of paddy extra. And uh, when mm -hmm. paddy extra decomposes in soil, it enriches soil with uh, nutrients. It also increases organic carbon of the soil and uh, at the same time reduces the pollution that happens because of uh, burning. So long-term sustainable solution, if we talk about, uh, this is uh, certainly long-term sustainable uh, solution for uh, keeping good soil health. And when we talk of one health, uh, the all, uh, whether it is uh, animal health, plant health, human health, it all originates from the soil. If our soil is healthy, everybody is healthy. If soil is sick, soil mm -hmm. is not healthy, everybody gets uh, into problem. And therefore, we must take mm -hmm. care of uh, mother earth, mother soil. And this is therefore a very sustainable solution to enrich soil with uh, uh, organic carbon and with uh, biomass. Is, is, is this the magic bullet that we've been waiting for? Uh, uh, can, can we can, can we look forward to this problem being eliminated altogether with uh, innovations like the Busa decomposer? So people have to understand it's a long-term benefit. I would not call it uh, magic uh, because uh, uh, when we say magic, it gives the impression that uh, the moment you spray the solution, the paddy straw will disappear from the field. That, that's not going to happen. It has its own action time. It takes 25 days to 30 days to decompose. And it has to be followed by certain uh, procedures that is uh, subjecting it to a rotavator to mix it with the soil and then applying uh, a light irrigation. And that accelerates the process of decomposition. Then along with that, it requires, as I said, a minimum 25 to 30 days. And therefore, we have to do away with the long duration varieties of paddy. If you cannot do this 150 days, 155 days variety, if they are under cultivation, then obviously you need another 30 days to, to make the field ready for wheat sowing. Uh, that means uh, it, it would not be so sustainable. And therefore developing varieties, which are about say 125 to 130 days uh, paddy variety, they gives about 20 to 25 days time between rice and uh, wheat. So uh, that's another thing that we are working through breeding program, but at the same time, we have to take, uh, make sure that these uh, early duration varieties are also, uh, if not as high uh, yielding as the long duration variety, at least they are close to them so that the farmers do not lose their uh, profitability. Mm -hmm. um, Dhruv, uh, tell me about Nurture Farm's involvement with this. What What is the idea in partnering with IARI and uh, what do you do? How, how, how will you help in uh, promoting the adoption of, uh, of this innovation? Yeah, uh, great question, Vivek. So I think, uh, you know, Nurture Farm uh, has come into existence with one single goal, which is helping build farmer resilience. Uh, and uh, farmers today are extremely challenged because of smaller land holdings. Uh, I think access to farm mechanization is still uh, extremely low uh, and the shared economy models don't exist. And so as such, the farmer's uh, uh, ability to make a meaningful livelihood from the small land holdings is fast depleting. You know, the cost of manpower is going up. Uh, there are multiple challenges in terms of discovering new knowledge systems of, uh, of how they can take care of pests, how they can uh, get better soil health and continue to evolve agriculture to being more sustainable overall and help transition to sustainable practices. Uh, so that is our vision in terms of helping farmers uh, reduce their cost of operation and increase the yield and productivity, thereby achieving the, uh, the goal of doubling farmers' income. Now to that end, you know, we focused uh, heavily on how do we transition some of these, uh, you know, uh, like Dr. Singh said, uh, very challenging uh, practices 
and help farmers adopt. And we believe Nurture is positioned uh, really well because uh, we believe that technology is going to drive a lot of this revolution, right? Reaching every farmer's household, every rural household is our ambition. And we are building the digital highway through which we can start uh, guiding and getting those knowledge systems in the hands of farmers. So in, in this last 18 months, Nurture has already got over a million farmers that uh, are on our platform. Uh, in the last uh, three, four months, uh, in the early part of this year, we onboarded uh, on a pilot basis, five lakh acres out of approximately the 5.7 lakh acres that is burnt every year. And I think that number is probably increasing each year. So mm -hmm. our mission was to really identify, uh, you know, what are the best technologies available, uh, including some of the farm mechanization opportunities that uh, Dr. Singh mentioned, the rotavator, happy seeder, super seeder, all of these are absolutely essential to uh, driving uh, the right transformation. Now we definitely identified uh, Pusa Decomposer as, as a great uh, bio uh, soil friendly technology. I think the challenge was that the form it was available in was a capsule form required two weeks of preparation by farmers and the systems to then uh, disperse it across their fields uh, weren't readily available. Uh, and this is where uh, Nurture, because of our fleet of farm mechanization, uh, as well, a part what of do you mean sprayers, when you say systems to uh, 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 use it or disperse it? So essentially, once uh, you know the, the there is a two week preparation time, I think uh, for the capsule form uh, to then prepare the actual enzyme that can be dispersed in the field, right? Uh, so uh, typically farmers would be using some sort of a, a pipe to then go spray across field, which may or may not be suitable over large areas, right? For a small farm, it's still okay, one to two acres, but beyond that, it starts becoming challenging. Uh, this is where we identified a real need where uh, farm mechanization uh, through boom sprayers could actually disperse and spray this with good efficacy across larger areas. Uh, in a more time efficient manner. Uh, time is our enemy here, as Dr. Singh rightly said, mm -hmm. right? We, we have a very limited window between the two seasons. And unless we give adequate amount of time for the decomposition to happen, uh, farmers won't see the benefit of this. Uh, so what we actually did was uh, <clears throat> with another sister concern within U the UPL umbrella, uh, NPP, which work on biosolutions, uh, we actually looked at how we can uh, sort of transform the uh, core PUSA technology to a more sprayable powder form, which is what we've done. And now this is in the form that is easily water soluble and ready to deploy at scale. Uh, so what we've done over the last, uh, essentially one year that we've been working closely with IRI uh, is we've taken that technology, got their scientists and, and our scientists working together to get this into a form that it can be scaled and deployed in a short amount of time. Uh, the second thing we've done is we've applied uh, gig economy for the first time in rural India. We introduced gig economy for the first time where we got people from these very villages, trained them on uh, the idea of crop residue management and what needs to happen. Uh, we created employment for them uh, in a gig economy mode where they went and onboarded farmers from those villages onto our digital platform. The beauty of this is that now we have uh, tens of thousands of farmers, over 25,000 farmers signed up for this on a pilot scale uh, where we know exactly where their farms are. We know the acreage, we know the variety that they've sown and we, we know the approximate harvest, harvest date and time. Now with this information, we are in a much better position uh, to orchestrate this entire operation and it will be a complete military-like operation as you can imagine where we will be positioning these boom sprayers with all of the uh, PUSA decomposer uh, uh, product that has to go in, the enzyme that has to go in, in the right clusters at the right time following the harvest cycle. And so- Look, So who pays uh, for it? Uh, so that, does the farmer have to uh, have to fork out the money or, or is it something that, that you don't charge the farmer for? So we are, we are, not charging the farmer anything for this. This is an absolutely free service. And obviously the, mm -hmm. the next logical question you would ask is why is it free, right? And is it sustainable? Mm -hmm. And absolutely. we believe that- for you? Yeah. 
what's in it for us absolutely right and and you know we are not doing this purely out of charity uh, i'll be absolutely honest right we are doing this to make this a su- sustainable and a successful transition to sustainable agricultural practices right somebody has to take the first step somebody has to put faith and trust forward uh, and nurture is choosing to do that because we believe when farmers see the benefit of this when they get lauded and applauded for doing the right thing uh, because they have the right partners and the right knowledge systems and the right technologies in their hand they will be incentivized to take on further additional uh, sustainable practices um, so what we are doing is now that we have farmers on board we are also introducing further sustainable practices such as awd and dsr now these will help further reduce greenhouse gas emission they will further help reduce the consumption <coughs> of water uh, to grow rice and all of these will unlock value uh, in the value chain for farmers and for us uh, and we are also deeply focused on creating a new green label of sustainably grown crops we believe that if we can start measuring and start uh, providing traceability to every acre of uh rice or any crop which is sustainably grown the world is ready for it the world will be willing to pay that extra 1 or 2 rupees a kilo which probably only translates to 5 paisa per meal for you and me uh so when we start thinking about it and start connecting every individual to every farm and this is only possible through digital technologies uh we believe change is very much possible and and all of the stars are aligned for us to start driving that change but yes most definitely somebody has to take the first move and make that first uh, investment of faith and trust right uh, dr singh uh, tell us about the scale of the problem and uh, what are your uh, targets and ambitions in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, the number of farmers or the, or, or the area of land that you hope to reach uh, starting this year and going forward so as i said that the total rice area in the country is 44 million hectare if you just focus on the state of punjab alone and haryana uh, punjab mm-hmm. grows rice in 3 million hectare area and haryana grows in 1.2 million hectare area so you can imagine you know from 3 million hectare area in punjab on an average 5 tons if you take about 15 to 20 million tons of uh, paddy biomass is uh, produced and that's huge actually is not that 100% of it is being burned completely uh, at present but yes uh, a good proportion of this is being burned and that has so, to be uh, half of it would be half of that area would be burning yeah, so we have been measuring it uh, very um, regularly from 2016 onward the number of fire spots total uh, which have mm-hmm. come substantially down from 2016 to 2000 uh, 18 there was almost 50% reduction and that happened because of the intervention by the government by means of you know uh, machine uh, substitutions machines were provided for uh, you know uh, baling for uh, happy seeders and super seeders and these kinds of things were provided and that reduced the instance uh, to to a great extent but still a uh, lot of it is being born about 60000 uh, fire spots if you see uh, we do this uh, regular measurement through satellite imaging from our institutes and we have uh, mm-hmm. narrowed it down to not district level even to the village level and uh, the coordinates of each and every field which is burnt is available with us so uh, that would help in coordinating like how what are the farmers who have adopted the technology and in those areas where the burning has happened or not that can be precisely measured through satellite uh, imaging uh, system so uh, that, that's where now this is very important that you know we create awareness uh, among the farmers tell them about the value that this technology offers long term solution that it offers to environment to soil health and other issues and people once they understand the benefits definitely they will uh, adopt it i am sure about it mm-hmm. yeah hey, do you have a target in mind as to say by so, this well, year as, we should we should yeah, have so we had uh, we had one free uh, farms uh, well that's uh, that's a big uh, big uh, target because uh, as i said out of uh, uh, 3 million hectare area about uh, 5 lakh hectare is basmati paddy in punjab 
and in haryana also about 5 lakh hectare is basmati paddy so basmati paddy is generally not grown because people harvest it manually because if they harvest by combine there is high proportion of uh, broken rice so it is harvested mm -hmm. manually and uh, that paddy is try is removed but rest is still you know uh, close to 3 million hectare both punjab and haryana put together so 100% uh, coverage in the technology would not be possible the target set by uh, upl as is about to say uh, 5 lakh acres uh, and 5 lakh acres is about uh, 2 lakh hectare area if that is covered to start with i would say that this is a very good uh, it will be very good achievements and once the people uh, realize the benefit uh, i think uh, the adoption of the technology will be very easy fast and that that's yeah. what our uh, main objective is we have also done you know a couple of other uh, you know we we are doing uh, production by other companies also uh, but as you said that you know uh, up scaling large scale application giving the time window this is very very uh, crucial and that is where mechanization in application of decomposer is also extremely important manual spraying having a slightly spray. unrelated slightly unrelated question uh, i've often wondered should punjab be growing rice at all well Since that's you're, a very you're, you're a very, very good question and i uh, i would like to say that uh, now uh, we must diversify agriculture in punjab if uh, punjab agriculture has to become sustainable and there are a couple of options available for example uh, soya bean in kharif season particularly soya bean maize and pigeon pea these are three very viable options and soya bean maize together can address also the problem of uh, you know uh, uh, edible oil that we are importing about 70000 crores uh, annually uh, if soya bean is diversified in place of uh, rice, this would be a very good uh, option. And uh, soya bean can very well grow in Punjab. A little longer duration variety is about 135 days varieties. They will yield better than the varieties which are there in central India. Hardly you get about 12 quintals per hectare. But in, in uh, Punjab, you can get about 25 quintals per uh, hectare easily of soya bean. So if there is a remunerative price provided, assurance provided for uh, uh, you know, market linkage with market with for soybean for maize. This could be a very good uh, option for diversification in Punjab, and that will provide solution for rice farming, and that will address many problem in one go. The first problem of uh, probably burning uh, pollution that happens, the labor problem that you need in case of rice because highly labor intensive for transplanting, and then the water problem. Uh, you know, you use about 3,000 to 4,000 liters of water for production of one kilogram of rice. So with this diversification, mm -hmm. these three problems can be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, Dhruv, Dr. Singh, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, I hope this will be a much less bleaker winter for uh, the northern plains of India. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you. Thanks.